The Atesh Partisan Movement has announced the mobilization of its agents into the ranks of the Russian Armed Forces, according to a report shared by the group on Telegram. The report claims that, for the first time since the full-scale war began, Russia has openly started drafting Ukrainians from recently occupied territories from military service. Agents from our movement took advantage of this and came to the military enlistment offices as volunteers. This will allow us to conduct operations within military units and gather more relevant information, the partisans said. According to Atesh, residents in the Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia and Kherson regions are being forced to serve in the Russian military, which the group considers an international war crime. The Russians reportedly promised that the conscripts will not be sent to the special military operation area. But no one believes this for obvious reasons. If you have been drafted in the temporarily occupied Ukrainian territories, reach out to us and make the occupiers regret everything they have done, the partisans reported. Earlier in October, the Center for National Resistance reported that conscription had begun in the temporarily occupied territories. The draft campaign is set to last until December the 31st, with a target of mobilization at least 150,000 recruits. This number includes a significant portion from the annexed regions of Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia, Kherson and Crimea. The first conscription campaign in the occupied territories took place in the autumn of last year. As then, recruits are now being promised that their service will not involve participation in the special military operation. However, Center for National Resistance reports indicate that many conscripts were later coerced into signing contracts with Russia's Ministry of Defense and ended up fighting against their homeland. In a report issued at the end of August, Center for National Resistance suggested that residents in occupied regions were reluctant to join the Russian military. All regions have failed to meet recruitment targets for the Russian armed forces. The overall shortfall across the temporarily occupied territories is 60%. The report read, The situation is reportedly worse in the Zaporizhia and Kherson regions where Russians have managed to recruit only a few dozen individuals. The Israeli Defense Forces IDF, have showcased fighter jets that were used to carry out strikes on Iran's missile facilities last night. The video and photos released by the IDF show F-15 and F-16 fighter jets heading out to launch the attack in Iran. The images also show Israeli Air Force Squadron's four female navigators who participated in the attack. The aircraft safely returned to Israel after successful completion of the operation, IDF stated. Israeli Defense Forces reported on Saturday that it carried out successful airstrikes on multiple military targets in Iran, specifically targeting missile manufacturing facilities. Dozens of aircraft, including fighter jets, refuelers, and spy planes, participated in Israel's strikes some 1,600 kilometers from the country, the Israeli military said. For astronauts returned to Earth on Friday after a nearly eight-month space station stay extended by Boeing's capsule trouble and Hurricane Milton. A SpaceX capsule carrying the crew parachuted before dawn into the Gulf of Mexico just off the Florida coast after undocking from the International Space Station midweek. The three Americans and one Russian should have been back two months ago. But their homecoming was stalled by problems with Boeing's new Starliner astronaut capsule which came back empty in September because of safety concerns. Then Hurricane Milton interfered, followed by another two weeks of high wind and rough seas. SpaceX launched the four, NASA's Matthew Dominic, Michael Barrett and Jeanette Epps, and Russia's Alexander Grabenkin, in March. 
Barrett, the only space veteran going into the mission, acknowledged the support teams back home that had to replan, retool and kind of redo everything right along with us, and helped us to roll with all those punches. Their replacements are the two Starliner test pilots Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, whose own mission went from 8 days to 8 months, and two astronauts launched by SpaceX 4 weeks ago. Those four will remain up there until February. The space station is now back to its normal crew size of seven, for Americans and three Russians, after months of overflow. Like we said before, the capsule's going about 15 to 16 miles per hour. And splash down. As you can see, SpaceX's recovery ship and team have been waiting for Dragon splashdown. Dragon successfully re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, followed by deployment of its parachutes to slow the spacecraft down, fired straps and, um, and harnesses around, as you can see there, around the Dragon capsule. We also heard confirmation that uh, the words that were used were unfired ordnance.